Hey there, Falcon fans. This is Stickster. I wanted to show you some different kinds of randomness that you can find in the modulation in Falcon. Uh, you can use all sorts of different random uh, modulators to uh, cause your sounds to grow, be a little bit chaotic, a little bit unpredictable, give them a more kind of organic sound. I'm going to show this to you on the basis of pitch because that's very easy to hear and very easy to tell what's going on. To start with, I'm going to show you a technique that I often use with my patches, uh, which is just to cause some uh, randomness in pitch that is a little bit like an oscillator drift. And there are many ways to do this. Uh, the first one that I'm going to show you is uh, actually using an LFO, and we're going to use one of the chaos functions. So I'm going to go to this LFO. I'm going to use one of the chaos functions. There are two different ones here. There's a Rosler function and a Lorenz function. And all you need to know about these basically is that there are two different kinds of mathematical functions that cause results that are uh, unpredictable or that don't repeat. Now, one of these is the Rosler function. And what you're going to see about this is you can tell what's going to happen over time is it's going to modulate very little. And then the modulation is going to become wider. It's going to close down and then it's going to get wider again. And how that works will change with the phase. Now, the phase that you use here actually inject some different values into the equation. And so it makes the function act differently as you change it. So in this case, the loop of the function is going to start narrow, become wide, become moderate, then back to wide, then back to moderate before it loops around. And if we change it again, you're going to find that it starts out narrow, becomes very wide, doesn't close down a lot, stays pretty wide before it goes back to narrow again. So you can use this phase to change the nature of that function, however you like to do. And of course, the frequency will change how long it takes for your modulation to happen uh, over the course of the note being held out or whatever you're applying this to. I actually like to use the Lorenz function more than the Rosler one. And as you apply this, uh, you'll see that the phase, again, changes the nature of the function. And as you change that phase, you'll see that at certain points, the function actually flips on its head a bit. And so you can get some very different results depending on how you decide to set that beginning phase. I'm just going to turn this back to zero for now. And I'm going to show you how this sounds when we apply it to pitch. So I'm going to modulate our pitch here, add modulation, and we're going to use this key group, this LFO2, which is our drift. And I am going to leave, uh, I'm going to leave that, that modulation. Let's edit that modulation so you can see what's going on here. I'm going to leave this modulation pretty wide. So we're varying by up to a semitone. Because the modulation is bipolar, it's going to be a, a semitone up or down from our pitch. Here's what that sounds like. You'll notice that each time I hit the note, because we are re-triggering, if you notice our trigger mode is re-trigger, every time I hit a note, you're getting essentially the same kind of modulation. Now, if you don't like that, what you could do is actually change this to no re-trigger. And what's happening here is because we're not re-triggering, the pitch is going to follow the function uh, according to when the uh, when Falcon's uh, internal clock. Uh, started. And all notes will follow that same pitch shifting. All right, so that gives you kind of a good idea of how that's going to work. Um, a way that I often like to uh, change the way that I'm doing uh, drift or pitch oscillation is I will often use, instead of a chaos oscillator, I'll use a sample and hold oscillator. And if I were to leave this as is, I'm going to turn up the frequency a little bit so that you can hear what's going on a little bit more easily. Let me turn that frequency up even further. I'm hitting one note there, but you can hear the stair step in the pitch that's happening, right? So often what I will do is change this frequency to zero. And what that means is that each note I hit, 
we'll get a new sample and hold value, and then that's it. And of course, we need to switch this back to trigger mode. We're going to put it to retrigger. So every time I hit a note, you're going to hear a different pitch. All right. So now you're hearing hopefully quite a bit of variance there. If I play a chord, uh, of course, at this amount of depth and pitch modulation, it's probably going to sound terrible. Sure enough, sounds terrible. So what I can do is I could adjust either the uh, the modulation uh, that I'm applying here. I could go to the pitch. I can edit the modulation and change the uh, amount of modulation that's being applied um, down to a very low amount. What I find is that uh, because... Uh, this slider is very finicky. What I'll do is I'll set it to something, you know, fairly wide, 20, 22 cents, 24 cents, something like that. And then I'll change the depth here down to, let's say, 25 or 30 cents or 30 percent, excuse me. Now then, when I play that chord, basically in tune, but it's subtly different each time. Each note in that chord is up or down eh, maybe six or seven cents from what it should be. Uh, it's going to come up uh, somewhere within that range. And so it gives you a little bit more of an organic feel. Uh, I've covered this in another video that you can see uh, at more length. I'll uh, post a link here uh, if you'd like to check that out. But for now, let's look at another uh, another type of randomness oscillator which we can use, which is the drunk oscillator. So I'm going to change this to a drunk oscillator. Let's see what's happening with our pitch. Uh, it is still being uh, modulated uh, by this oscillator. I'm going to change this up to uh, a semitone or so. That way you'll be able to hear what's happening. And in fact, in fact, I'm going to actually change this modulation quite a bit here. Let's move this up to a, like many semitones. Now you're going to be able to actually see what happens as I hit a key. All right. Uh, you're hearing a very different value. I'm going to, uh, and I'm going to note here that the trigger mode is right now re-trigger. I'm going to change this to no re-trigger. And if you watch this little pip here, you can see what's happening while this note is on. Now the bandwidth here is going to affect how widely this, uh, this modulation is going to happen. So if I turn that bandwidth up, you can see that note is wandering all over the place. And the smooth will determine how many times a second new values are being taken. And the cool thing about the drunk oscillator is that it is, it's random in a way that uh, it makes you think of like how a drunk person might walk. Like they wobble around. They basically stay close to where they think they're going to, but they kind of wander off. And the further away they go, they might wander over to the left for a while, and then they'll be on the left. And then they might wander over the line and be on the right for a while, and then they might come back to the middle. Uh, and you just can't tell whether things are going to stay one place or another. This bias control will allow you to map uh, how much the oscillator will tend to go below or above the middle level that you've set, the, the starting value. So what I like to do here is I'll take this smooth value and I'll take it so down a bit so that that wobbling is not happening quite as often. And I might take the bandwidth down so it's not uh, happening as as often. Let me show you what when I when I apply this smooth value, this lower smooth value. It's changing less often. Right? Changing less often, but when it does, it's pretty drastic. Right? So the smooth value is almost like how often the drunk person is uh, changing their direction or, you know, changing their, their, uh, uh, you know, where they're headed. The bandwidth is a measure of how much they're going to change when they do change. So that's a lot. But if I change this down to, you know, just a couple hertz. Yeah, not quite as drastic. 
Um, in order to make this useful for something like pitch, of course, we'd want to edit the, edit the modulation. And we'd want to change this, obviously, way below the 10 semitones that we had. Maybe change it down to just some handful of cents. And that's a great way to hear the master tuning on a synth go in and out as we play. All right, so those are three different kinds of randomness that you can apply. And of course, you can do this for anything other than pitch. Uh, I'm going to show you some uses for this in a future video uh, where I am going to uh, set up a beautiful kind of ambient evolving pad that you can use uh, for your space ambient or uh, your other kind of more moody compositions. I'll show you that in another video. And until then, I hope you have a lot of fun with Falcon, and I'll see you next time.